Okay, good evening and welcome to The Real Me, Chapter 6. Uh, this is the Hashkafa Shir that I give twice a week. Uh, we tie in this week's Parsha, Parsha's Pinchas. Uh, chapter 6 is titled The Servants. Um, he continues to talk about, we talked about it in the last chapter, how a person is comprised of two parts, his nefesh and his neshama. The nefesh is all the midos that a person has, and the neshama, the real I, or the real me, is your free will, the ability to decide. You know, everyone's given different strengths and different weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Some people have more strengths than others. So we have to decide uh, when to use and when not to use these strengths uh, and fight those weaknesses in order to make the right decision. And that's ultimately who we are. Our decision making is the right decision. Um, he talks more about the servants over here, the Midos. He calls the Midos the servants, just to help uh, clarify what he's talking about. He says that imagine. Um, we have two people, for example, you know, he uses uh, an example of a working person, an example of a learning person, just so it's fair for everybody. He says, let's look at two people. One is industrious and the other lazy. Our industrious friends got up automatically at 6.30, at 7 he's in shul, and at 10 to 8 he's back home with bread and milk that he picked up at the local grocery, right? He didn't even get butter. I mean, this is a real avre. He doesn't get butter. At 8.30, he's taking the children to the bus on exactly at 9. He's in cold. It's a beauty to behold. The other person, the lazy one, has been pushing the stews button since 7 and makes it to 7.30 minutes just time for Barku. His wife has to get the kids out herself. He slides in the cold at 9.30, just missed 33, just missing Shmir Starm, so he didn't get that extra money. He's a lazy guy, or imagine, right? The fellow who rises at 5.30, right? If you're a working guy, you don't get up at... At 6.30, you get up at 5.30, you gotta learn tough you can learn with his chavrus in the morning if he rushes home after diving to help his wife and get to the office by 9. He's working. His sluggish friend can be seen at 9 o'clock, minion can barely get to his store before 10.30, right? It's interesting. The person who's at 9, you know, he has his job. He's working for somebody else. The guy who's lazy, you know, he has his own, he's an entrepreneur, he has his own business. He's opening at 10.30. He, he hopes to be able to stay awake at the dachyomi share at night if he gets there in time. So you see, obviously, two different people. So we would say, how is he the first person? The first type of person is a very industrious person. He's a very, uh, he's not lazy at all. The second person is very lazy. Um, so obviously, the first person is a greater person. But then he brings it, you know, he brings the message home. Um, let's imagine the schedule of the busy and productive person, the lazy one, a bit differently. The reason why the industrious one gets to shul on time is because he has a private chauffeur. He didn't know about that. The reason why he gets up immediately at the sound of the alarm clock is because there are two servants who gently nudge him out of bed. He sends one servant to the grocery store and the chauffeur takes him to the colo. Obviously he walked the dialing himself. Would we be as impressed by this person if this were the case? Right? So he compares the meadows that a person has just because a person is a very zarious person. He's a, a he's an industrious person, a zarious. Uh, and he's able to get out of bed very easily and get to places he needs to go on time. Uh, he has servants that do it, has chauffeurs that do it for him. That's the midos that a person's given. That's part of your nefesh, right? You can't compare one person's nefesh to another person's nefesh. It has no impact on deciding who the real I, the real me is in that person. The real me is not that per- part of the person. Even if you're someone who's very lazy, but you made the right decision today, and by going to the 9 o'clock minion, instead of, uh, I don't know, instead of watching... Uh, sports center in the morning, he went to the 9 o'clock minion. For him, that was very difficult. The other guy, you know, he's going to his chavrusa to learn dafyomi at 5.30 in the morning. That wasn't a test for him. This guy, you know, uh, in fact, the other guy who woke up at 5.30, you know, because he was such a haste to get out to his chavrusa, and he woke up his wife also. He was very loud in, 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 in his bedroom getting out of bed, so he woke up his wife. He wanted to get there on time. He got there five minutes early so he can learn muster before he gets to learn dafyomi. And the other guy, you know, who nine o'clock minion, you know, he, he wanted to watch Sports Center. I mean it was a great game last night, you know. Um, it was a great game. Uh, but he, he decided instead of watching Sports Center, I'll, I'll go to Minion, I'll watch Sports Center after. Uh, so he fought his gates or Hara and he's the real eye. He made the right decision. Now the guy made the wrong decision because he hastily got up and made noise in his bedroom when he was waking up his wife. So this is what he says, basically, we have to realize that the meadows we have are like servants. They're just, you know, the good meadows we have. They're like chauffeurs. They do it for us. You can't give credit to that person because he has good meadows. He was born with that. You know, I think these are things are uh, we, we all can relate to, we all understand very simply, but 
I think it's a nice muscle that he brings about chauffeurs and things like that. The Midos is like a chauffeur doing it for you. We don't think of it like that, that it's really servicing you. You're not even doing anything. We think, oh, you have a good Midos, but you're exercising the good Midos. Really, a lot of times you're doing it by habit. You're doing it by rote. Um, even if you have good Midos, you don't get any credit for that. It's not you. Only decision-making is you. How does this relate to this week's Parsha? This week's Parsha is Parsha's Pinchas. Um, the beginning of the Parsha talks about Pinchas, who is Zoka to the Kahuna. More importantly, was Zoka Brisi Shalom. Right, Pinchas, some say it was Eliyahu Hanavi. What did he do at the end of the last week's Parsha? Parsha's Balak. Um, some of the Jews were rebelling and they were taking from the Midyanim, the woman from the Midyanim. And they had a riot there, but they were together with them in Farhesia, right? When, it, when Hashem said they're not supposed to be with the Midyanim. He went ahead, the two most prominent people, they were a prince, a prince and a princess, I think, the leaders of tribes, and a princess from, from Midian, one of the, 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 the princes, the daughter of a king. He went and he personally killed them in front of everybody with a spear. Because um, the halacha is that a bol aram is kanai and pogan boat, right? Someone who is bol, a non Jewish woman. Um, a kanai is pogan boat. Now, a kanai usually means like a zealous person. We think of kanai as bad people, kanai are crazy people. You know, I mean, I'm not yeah, weighing in, but people would say like a person like Mayor Khan was a Kanai, you know, he's a crazy, I'm not saying he's a crazy person, that's for you to decide a crazy person or not, but he was a zealous person, he's a Kanai, you know, we believe that that, that that the Jewish state should be a theocracy, you know, there's still people like that here in Israel, so and some people really believe in them, I'm not, I'm not getting political over here, but those are people, ident- other people identify as Kanoim, and the Torah calls Pinchas Benoz are Kanai, and obviously it's, it's, a, it's a compliment that we're calling him a Kanai, Right, Kano is Kinosi, right? It's interesting the word Kano, we translate, the article translate as zealous, but the real meaning of the word Kina, right? We all know what the word Kina means. Kina means jealous, right? which would rhyme with zealous. Um, and, and if he, if he does such a violent act, he killed two people, how does that justify Gebrisi Shalom? Why do you get peace for that? And the Kamanim bring Karbonas, they bring the Karman Shalom, they bring peace to the world. You're bringing peace to the world by killing people? Hard to understand. The idea is over here that there's two types of things we call kinna, and really only one of them is the real kinna. There's jealousy and there's envy. Um, jealous, the difference between jealousy and envy, jealousy, envy is that I'm envious of the other person. He has something, either something that I really want. He has, he has a car I really want, or he has a possession that I really want, he has a collectible that I really want, or he has a trait that I really want. He's really smart or, you know, he's really hardworking. I know... I have a trait. I envy that guy. I envy the guy. Uh, I really want to have what he has. It's not that I want to take it away from him. I just want to get to his level to have what he has. He has something possession that I want. It's a collectible that I want. I want that for myself. That's envy. It's nothing wrong with being envious, right? And usually what happens when someone's envious of the other person, it's not that I don't want the other person to have. I want what he has for myself. Therefore, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk like mature grown men or grown women. We'll talk. We'll work out a peaceful deal, a peaceful compromise. That's the way the Gemara and Sanhedrin. Right, shara. All right, when you have when you have a clock, the two people feel they're entitled to something, or you can have two different opinions arguing in the Kamara, arguing about ideology, right? And they have to make a law. There are lawmakers in the city, or the policy makers in the government, and they really want the best. Both of them really believe in their ideology, but they're really interested in the common good. So the, the best way to get the shalom is to make up shara, to make some sort of compromise, know exactly what I want and exactly what he wants, right? And the other things, the extraneous things, I could forgo in order to make peace, that we should have peace, we should have one kashras in the city, or I should have one uh, law for the country, or things like that. So you make policies, you, you reach peace that way. That's the way of reaching peace, when, you're, when, you, when you want something the other guy has, but you believe in what you have also. So you want to buy the thing from the guy, you offer him a fair price, right? That's a way of compromise, buying something, offering a price, negotiating a price, right? In Israel, with the taxi drivers, negotiate a price. I mean, that's the, that's, that's the way of the street. That's the way of doing it. You are, that's the way it is over here. You, you organize you a fair price. So that's negotiation, and that's compromise, and that's a good thing. That's not what kinda means. Kinda does not mean, and kinda means jealousy. It's commonly turned. Jealousy means something else. Jealousy means... It's not so much that I want what the other person has, it's just I don't want the other person to have what he has because I want to be better than the other person or I want the power of the other person. But the thing he has is not the object. I don't want to have that object for some other ulterior reason because I want power. The two prime examples you find in the Torah, both in Savior of Midbar, one by Korah. Korah, as Al said, he had Kinnah. He really, you know, he complained, Kolam called Kadoshim, but he really he wanted to be in power. He wanted to be the one in power. 
um, <coughs> take it away from Moshe. He didn't want Moshe to have what he had. And the same thing we heard went by by Zimri Bas Salu and the first shit, well, I forgot the name, person's name in last week's parsha that he committed. Why did he have to have the the the, the, the relationship with her? Um, the, the relations with her in public. Why do you have to do it in public in front of everybody? It was, it wasn't just that he wanted, he had a sexual desire for the woman. It was more than that. He wanted to rebel against Hashem. He wanted the power. To, he didn't agree. He didn't agree with the leadership of Klal Yisrael. He didn't agree with Hashem. He was rebelling. When you rebel, it's not that you want what the other person has. That you just don't want the other person to have what he has because I want to be better than the other person. And the way, and that's called bullying. If you know, just in common layman terms, when you go to school when you're younger, and this exists, people think it only exists in, in grade school. No, bullying exists. It's a real thing in the world. Um, I found this in my life recently. I don't know a, a lot, but figure I, I see a lot of examples in my life. People try to bully me. People try to bully me, and they're not. I see people are jealous of me, and they're they're jealous. They don't want whatever I have that I should have that, and they try to bully me and try to you know tell me things. Uh, People have made different claims against me. I can't get into those claims. They, they've, um, you know, said I don't have certain rights, and you know, it's not out of because they want those rights so much. It's they just don't want the power, and they don't want me to have what I'm having, and that's called jealousy. That's what jealous means, not envy. Envy is a good thing. If you're envious of someone, you go learn from them. He's a mentor. You learn from him. You work out a peace negotiation. You. To make a deal with him, a financial deal that's good for both of you. But when you're when you have jealousy, there's no way to fight bullying. If someone's bullying you, the only way to fight bullying is to bully them back. You have to bully, be a man, stand up to it, realize that the guy's bullying you, and bully him back. You know, and that's what Pinchas did over here. He realized that these two people, especially from Israel, the, the leader of the tribe from Israel, he was he was bullying Hashem. He was rebelling against Moshe against Hashem. He was doing it in public. The only way to do it is, is to use force and to kill. I'm not saying you should kill people. That's not the way to stand up to bullying. You shouldn't use violence. But uh, in this situation, that was the halacha, Kanai and Pogimbo. So he went ahead and he killed him in public. And that's the way of bringing shalom, right? If you want to bring shalom when there's envy, then you discuss things like human beings. You negotiate a price, negotiate a deal. When someone's bullying you, you don't negotiate anything. You bully them right back. You threaten them right back. Someone's threatening you. Right? They want to take advantage of you. People are trying to take advantage of you. You threaten them right back. You put them in their place. You stand up to them. That's part of being a man. You got to do that. Part of being bullying if you're just cowering in your place. So, so how does that fit into the real me? It fits into the real me because as he's talking about, we have Midos who calls our servants, right, that make things easy for us. He talks about someone who's lazy versus industrious versus czarist. Um because we have to, ultimately, you can't give more credit to the industrious person because that, he's born with that. It's his servants doing it, chauffeur doing it for him. Um, but we have to realize that besides the fact that everyone knows the laziness is a bad thing, it's not going to help you to be lazy, but sometimes it's very hard to distinguish which is a good servant and which is a bad servant. And the difference between envy and jealousy is not always so clear, right? Why are you really doing it? You really want what the other person has? You really just don't want him to have whatever he has. The Gemara says in numerous places, and women, right, who have a co-wife, they'd rather have their co-wife die or the co-wife be ushered to their husband, and they'll also be ushered to the husband. Tell us now she and Plishtim, like like Shimshon said, he wanted, he'd rather, I'm going to die, at least let the Plishtim go. And the women, you know, women have a lot of kin for their husband, a lot of uh, jealousy that they don't want their another woman to be with their husband. They'd rather die, uh, or rather be ushered to their husband, so the other woman could also be ushered to the husband. That It's kind of crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It's illogical, all thing. So when you're fighting, when you're going against it, you have to know that's the, the difference in envy. Envy can be a good thing, but jealousy is a terrible thing. And when we have servants, we have midos that service us, we have to know or make it, and we have to ultimately make the right decision based on what servants we have. We have to distinguish sometimes a fine line between what's a good midah and what's a bad midah. Jealousy is a very bad midah. Envy is a very good midah. And the way of dealing with them is very different, both for you who have the jealousy or the envy. You have to know if it's jealousy or envy. If you have envy, envy is someone person, work out a deal, learn from that person. If you're jealous of that person, fight it and get rid of it. And similarly, if you're standing up against someone else who's jealous against you, you got to bully them back. If the envy is against you, then you go work out a deal. But if he's jealous, that's what Pinchas did over here. Kind of that's how you bring Shalom against a bully against jealousy. That's the way to fight jealousy. You fight it back strongly. The opposition. Hope you enjoyed today's Mashkafa. I hope you enjoyed the noises in the background of all these people learning very loud. And uh, have a good Shabbos, and we'll see you next week. Bye.